The hands offer a variety of striking surfaces which are employed to attack and defend. Hardening these surfaces to make them effective weapons is a slow business that must be carried out with great care if injury is to be avoided. It is an accumulative process that cannot be hurried and that must be carried out under qualified supervision. One of the primary training aids of the karate exponent is the makiwara. A piece of equipment that comes in many guises and which forms a resilient target upon which the hands and feet are tempered. The object is not so much to form calluses as to accustom the body's weapons to impact and thereby strengthen them. This discipline continues for the entire career of the karate exponent. There is no point at which makiwara training is learned or perfected. It should be regarded just as one views the sharpening of a knife, a question of continuous maintenance rather than occasional major repair. As Pangai Noon developed from Chinese boxing, the open hand is the weapon of choice and is used to both strike and grab. A strong grip can be applied to vulnerable parts of an opponent's body to pinch and to tear the flesh. The crushing pressure of a well-conditioned hand can also be used to control an opponent after he has been subdued by a blow. More flexible than the fist, the tiger-like claws are the hallmark of this school of karate and one of its most feared weapons. To develop the paralyzing grip of Pangai Noon, nigirigami, literally gripping jars, are employed. Made of heavy ceramic, with a neck constructed to fit the trainee's hands, they can be progressively filled with sand or stones as the student improves to increase their weight and therefore their conditioning effect. In the Pangai Noon system, training with nigirigami takes place in the Sanchin stance. As the body is tensioned, the jars are raised. The shoulders are pulled down into the correct position, causing the muscles in the sides to tighten, and the fingers strengthened by gripping the necks of the jars and resisting their weight. While in this position, the strength and resistance of the student is tested by striking him repeatedly. The degree of tension must be sufficient for the muscles to withstand powerful attacks without lasting effect.
When the student can arrive at this physical and mental state, he is capable of closing with his opponent to fight at the range where his techniques will be most effective. The term karate literally means empty-handed. In reality, it is the human body which has been converted into a lethal weapon. Through cruel physical training, and with it the cultivation of a dauntless spirit so that one can stand any pain, the entire body is converted into a steel weapon. One who has mastered karate can knock down an opponent with but a single blow. The process to attain this mastery is long and tedious. There is no other means but patience and superhuman effort. No amount of training can be said to be enough. It must continue without end with greater endeavor. 